Hi guys, today we're going to be looking at uh, the pelvic floor using the Q3 from QSONO. For this you're going to need the convex probe and the patient positioning is like this. So we've got the patient lying in supine with his hips and his knees flexed so he's nice and comfortable. For the probe positioning, we're going to place the probe just above the pubic bones and the left hand side of the screen, which is where this little dot here is, is going to be on the patient's right hand side. The first image that we're going to take is going to be a transverse image. So let's put the probe on the patient and then I'll show you what we have to do to optimise the image. So we've got a towel just above the uh, pubic bones here just so the patient's nice and comfortable and we're just going to angle the probe back and down until the bladder comes into view. Now normally if we're doing this we're going to be doing it for biofeedback so the patient can see. So we might have the ultrasound unit facing myself and also facing the patient so that they can see everything that's happening. But just for the purposes of this, let's focus it out here. The first thing that you want to do is adjust the depth of the image so that the bladder appears in the right place on the screen and you can also see it moving. And I usually just tilt and rock the probe back and forth like this until I find that I get a nice clear image at the base of the bladder there. And I can see that we're going to be able to see if there's any movement. The next thing I'm going to do is just adjust the frequency to make sure that the frequency setting that we're on has given us the best image. And I think that at the moment it is. We've just set it to TH res, which on these QSONO units is quite good for image in the bladder. The only other thing that I might just adjust quickly is the focus position, which is our two arrows down the bottom here. So I'm just going to bring them up to the bladder base. Okay. So now we have an image of the bladder here. A couple of important things to consider. If you put too much pressure on the probe, it's going to distort the picture and it's going to make the bladder look like it's moving. So we're just going to keep the pressure nice and even throughout the exam. Okay, now that we've got our image here of the bladder, we're interested to see what happens when the patient does different types of movements. So first of all, I'm just going to ask the patient to take a deep breath in and breathe out. And you can see that the bladder moves up and down with inspiration and expiration. We're also interested to see, of course, what happens when the patient does an active pelvic floor contraction. So assuming that we've just gone through and explained what that looks like for the patient, let's have a look and see what an active pelvic floor muscle contraction is going to look like whenever you're ready. Okay. So there you can see a nice elevation in the bladder base. So if I was to put a marker on that, I hit function, measure, and then I put my little marker down here at the bottom of the bladder base, we can actually measure the bladder base elevation with that movement. So again, I'm just going to just guess where the bladder is going to get to and I can move this as I go. Okay, there's a contraction, but could I get you just to relax and go back again? Switch everything off. Okay, and now when you do a pelvic floor contraction, I'm going to measure the size of that contraction with my caliper. Okay, nice and easy, hold it there, hold it there. Perfect. So now we have an objective measure of how much bladder base elevation there was. So other things that we might be interested in having a look at with uh, a pelvic floor view on the ultrasound is what happens when the patient does a, an active movement. Does the bladder base uh, drop? Does it elevate? Are they able to maintain a pelvic floor contraction when they're moving their limbs? So could I just get you to straighten both legs out for me? Just let them drop out. Let's see what happens now when you do a straight leg raise to that bladder. 
Okay. And now what I'm going to ask you to do is to see if you can switch on your pelvic floor and maintain a pelvic floor contraction while you're doing that straight leg raise. So whenever you're ready, just switch on your pelvic floor for us and elevate. And come back down and relax everything. Now switch on your pelvic floor again and lift the left leg for us, please. And back down. Fantastic. Now we're going to switch to a sagittal view of the bladder. So this time we're going to have the left hand side of the screen or this area of the screen where the dot is facing towards the patient's head. We're going to go into the midline of the bladder and we're going to angle down So now what we're looking at here is the postero inferior wall of the bladder down here and we're able to see on this view not only posterior to anterior movement but also caudal to cephalic movement as well. So what we're going to focus on is this part of the bladder wall down here. Can I just get you to do a little contraction there for us please? And you can see it elevating and relax. And just one more time. And relax. Relax.